Hello, Sodor Island Forums, and welcome to this special edition of Rift Trains. Now, you're probably thinking, hey Darth Boko, why are you doing an MST3K-like production when Alaric has been doing the exact same thing for years, and doing it in a way that far surpasses anything you've been able to put out? Well, you're right to ask that question. However, you might be surprised to hear that this is not a deliberate attack on the works of a certain Mr. J. Alaric. It is simply something that I felt like doing. Take that, expectations of the masses! Anyways, if you're unfamiliar with how MST3K and other associated productions work, here's a quick rundown. You are about to enjoy the classic Thomas the Tank Engine episode, The Flying Kipper, a classic story of love, loss, disembodied hands, and fish. However, you'll find that some ignorant ass, namely myself, has refused to shut up and is mocking the production as you watch. Ain't I a stinker? Now, I can also detect some people thinking, why has this idiot decided to mock what is widely considered one of the greatest episodes of Thomas ever made? Why not mock one of those crappy new episodes with all the catchphrases and explosions? Wouldn't that be easier? My answer is that, yes, while it would definitely be easier to mock the new episodes, and I definitely plan to later on, I wanted the first Rift Trains production to be special. So sit back, relax, and enjoy five minutes of a guy furiously talking at models of steam engines. Remember, if you're not satisfied with this one, let me know what was bad about it, and the next one will be better. Enjoy the show! Wait a minute, at this point isn't the title technically Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends? Wait a minute, I don't get my... Oh, n never mind, it's gone and faded away on me. That's right, all the Crofts. The byproduct of a horribly botched experiment involving a kipper and an African swallow. Hello, Internet. Peace and love. I will be answering no more fan mail. Try new and improved David Mitten, the only director that can keep your hands warm in the winter. One winter evening... A shot rang out. Said, ...we'll be out early tomorrow. We've got to take the flying kipper. Don't tell Gordon, but I think if we pull the kipper nicely, the fat controller will let us... Have our own spin-off. The special coal they gave you... Stare into Henry's eyes! I demand it! Stare into them! That will be lovely. The tugboat, for its size, is the most powerful craft afloat. The harbour at the big station by the sea. There are passenger ships... Drug runners? And fishing boats also come here. Yes, come on down to the island of Sodor's Dock World and ride the new and improved Mega Crane. A rest in a special train to other places far away. I see you viewers at home. In retrospect, the Crashing Kipper was probably a better name idea. Henry was ready at five o'clock. There was snow and frost. And Ringo Starr was there for some reason. In brightest day, in blackest night, a young Mr. Percival assists Ringo Starr with some boxes. Wow, Acid has taken me to some pretty bizarre places, but this one really takes the cake. Ribbledy, flobbledy, doobledy doo, we're sick of being pulled by you! That is better, puffed Henry. You see, today on the island of Sodor, Henry wouldn't dare or whistle loudly at night because it would wake up all the sleeping children. The smoke and steam poured from his funnel into the cold air, and the fire's light shone brightly. Hurry, 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 panted Henry. What's so special about that one truck in the back that it gets to be all covered up? I eh, guess we'll never know. They were going well. The, light grew better. the signal was green, which on Sodor means run for your lives, the set is ending. I can see my house from here. Yellow signal appeared ahead. His driver prepared to stop, but the home signal was down. All clear, Henry. Away we go. Hi ho, Henry, away! They couldn't know the points from the main line to a siding were frozen. And the home Perhaps, however, they should have known that they were randomly driving into a siding that hadn't been on their original route. A good strain was waiting in the side. Full of the bodies of the fat controller's enemies. And the driver and fireman were drinking cocoa in the brake van. What horrible Kipper slackers they are. Said the guard. Who cares, said the fireman. This is good cocoa. That pretty much the sums up the guard. mindset of the Come staff of the Sodor Railway right there. They got out just in time. Run for your lives, it's Handy the Flying Engine, and he's really pissed off. Henry 
Harry's driver and fireman had jumped clear before the crash. And therefore avoided all injury. Isn't it lucky that no one was hurt? Little known fact, James was awarded an Emmy nomination for that cameo. The fat controller came to see him. The signal was down, sir, said Henry. Jetson! It wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused the accident. I'm putting out an arrest warrant for Mr. Freeze. They'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. Although really it's not the size that counts, it's mostly how you use it. Won't that be nice? Yes, sir, said Henry doubtfully. Henry, always the eternal optimist. Henry liked being a crew. He got to row on the starboard side of the boat, and then he got to be the coxswain. And you can't tell by the way I do my walk, I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. In his new shape. He looked so splendid and strong that they gave him three cheers. Hooray! 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 That's all you get. I am sorry to say that a lot of little children are raise their flippers in triumph as Henry passes. See Henry go by. They often see him pulling the express. He does it so well that Gordon is jealous. But that's another story. Next time on Thomas and Friends, Henry pulls the express so well that Gordon is jealous. <laughs>